Welcome to another episode of The Weigh In, where we discuss all things boxing. I'm joined by my regular sparring partner, Steve. How's it going, bro? Yeah, all good, bro. Nice one. And we're delighted to have our first guest of the new year, Casey Kadimi. How's it going? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm good, thanks. Um, hope, you lot, hope you lot all good. Thanks for having me. No worries, thanks for man. coming on, man. It's, been a, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Um, first, and, first and foremost, how's... How's the new year been for you? Uh, new year, you know, this year's been all right. Um, you know, I'm 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 starting it with positive mindset. So, yeah, just uh, at the moment it's been going well. So, so far so good, yeah. So far so good. Good stuff. And yeah. I, know, I know you've got a fight a fight announcement today. Yeah, I've got um fight announced. Um, I think it was yesterday, uh, or before yesterday. Um, yeah, on twenty seventh February, we're fighting on um. Um, on uh, things that are undercard. Um, Carl Frampton's undercard there. Oh, oh yeah. That's a, that's, a, me. that's a big card you got there, man. That's a, that's a big, big first big fight of the year. How are you feeling about being on the undercard of such a big show? Definitely, definitely feeling great. I mean, um, you know, this fight was meant to be done last year, but um, I'm just happy it's got rescheduled and being on the big undercard, uh, being on that big card. So, yeah, uh, feels great, man. So let's uh, a little bit about your opponent. So it's uh, I said Ijaz Iaz Ahmed. Yeah, Ijaz Ahmed. Um, you know he's a Midland champion. Um, yeah. So he fought for the WBO against Harvey Horn. He came out short on point. It was a very close fight. They said. Um, so yeah, I mean he was the only person that was uh, like U- UK wise available for us to fight for the IBF, and uh, you know he accepted the challenge with both hands. So. Um, He's got a record of like seven and two, uh, but what people don't realise that you super flyweight, you like boys, you have it tough in your in the matching because there's not many. There's like you know heavy, no, no. heavyweights, you can shift in some guys from Europe, etc. Flyweights, yeah. man, you guys see you guys like one and zero, and you're in a you're in a British title fight against like someone who's experienced. So like this guy's yeah. seven and two record, I can say to the audience like that's a legit seven and two. Like do you know what I mean? That's a, yeah, that's yeah, a he's, he's gonna have a real record, man. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not he's not he's not like anyone that coming to get paid it. And he, like I said, he's he's it's more of a big win for him. So he's yeah. coming to do everything to get the win. Um, so you know, um, on you, know, the, our, our 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 job is to go not make him do that. You know, get mm-hmm. get the win and move on. Hundred percent. You see, like if you see like winning record, he's got he's obviously still got a bit between his teeth to do well in the sport. Does that excite you more? You see, like a winning record. You see someone who's got who's hungry and and wants it just as much as you. Does that get like get the train make the training that little bit easier? Definitely. I mean, um, you know, uh, I, I that his record makes me makes me that uh, makes me to to be him. You know, uh, yeah. he's a legitimate fighter, and you know, he's coming to give it all. And I, I think someone like him with that record is going to bring the best out of me because um, you know, he's a he's a fighter, he's a boxer, and. Um, Fighting a guy that gives you a fight brings out the best out of you. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Looking forward to it. That looks very exciting, there, Casey. I know that um the fight will be for the WBO and IBF European Super Flyweight titles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, uh, we won the WBO last uh, 2019 in December. Uh, we fought against Pedro Matas, and the IBF was up for a grab because we want to build ourselves to fight for a world title. You know, hopefully, a few fights. Um. Maybe fight against uh, the bigger names that are UK super flyweight mm. domestically, like Charlie Edwards, Sonny Edwards. We're looking for you know, hopefully get those fight down the line. Um, but right now, yeah, uh, we're fully focused for Ajaz Ahmed, and he's the guy in our way right now. So get him out of the way, and then wicked. And we'll touch on um, Sonny Edwards and Charlie Edwards in a bit, no doubt. Um, can we just ask? Because obviously, like lockdown has an impact on all of our all of our jobs. I, I'm a uh, I'm a school teacher outside of this, you know, I'm teaching kids online. Um, Andy, you're a, you're a sports journalist. It changed yours. But boxing training has got to be one of the jobs that's got to be impacted in the strangest way. How, how's your training going, man? I mean, yeah, it's hard, man, because, uh, you know, when the lockdown happened the first time last year, I mean, the gym was completely closed. So no gym was allowed to stay open at all. And it was hard. We, we still had to stay focused and still, still train. Um, you know, the gym was closing and uh, opening. It was it was getting in in our nerve. But we we we, we as a fighter always find a way to get our training done. So yeah. I've got great coach. You know, we we had if we had to train at the park, we train at the park. If we had to train in under uh, in a car park, we train in a car park just to get the work done. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like we always find a way to get the job done in in order for us to be prepared for anything anything that comes up. 
That's legit. I'm getting uh, genuine rocky vibes, man. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll see you in Central Park, mate. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah, probably, man. <laughs> oh man, Andy, what you got? You got another question? Yeah, I was going to say it. I know you. I know you're an East End boy, but um, let's talk about your your roots. And I know you're from um, Afghanistan. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was um, I was born in Kabul, in Afghanistan, um, in 1994, and um, you know that time Taliban just took over. I think it was um, so. It was. It was a lot of things are going on. In 1998, we left, uh, we became a refugee. We, went, we, we left my country and went towards uh, Pakistan. We was there for like two years um, just to stay safe, but it wasn't, still wasn't safe for us. Um, so we started our journey to, towards UK, which we had one of our brother and our, our uncle here. And um, it was a long journey with like two years of a travel because obviously we didn't, it was a big family. We couldn't afford to come on a plane. So you plus the visas and all that stuff. It was long. We couldn't. So we had to come in on foot. So we went to countries and countries. So we, we was in Russia like for like um, six months, I think. And then from there, we start walking towards Slovakia, crossing borders and borders. And when we got to Germany, we was there for about seven, almost seven, eight months there. So it was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a hell of a journey. Um, but that journey definitely... Um, made me appreciate when when I got to this country. I knew how much I had to travel in order to get to a place where I can call home and where I call safe. So um definitely opened my eyes up. So it was it was great to, you know, experience that journey. It was like now I look back at it, it was an adventure because I remember we were hiding. It was it was scary at that time it was very scary because obviously we was hiding from the mm. from the police. We couldn't get caught through the borders. You know, the 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 police all they treat you very differently to the police you see here. Especially if you're crossing borders and if you're a refugee. Um, and there's a lot of beating and there's a lot of, uh, it, you know, they're very brutal. Yeah. So it wasn't like you get caught and you get sent back. No, it's not like you care um, or they keep you in a cell or something. They beat the hell out of you. I mean, right now, if you look at recent news, people die through crossing borders. They get beaten up to death by police. Um, so it's, it's, it's crazy. But how, So when you when you was a kid, just if you're asking, like, how did... Um... How aware was you of all of that, of all of that stuff, and did you feel that kind of intensity and that sense of danger while it's happening, or was you maybe kind of uh, a little shielded from your parents, or how did that just kind of like I can't even imagine I mean, what that was, I was like. Young. I was young. I was about six and a half, probably six. Um, mm. You know, for the crossing the borders and in, in Russia. I remember being in Russia. We was like in a little small flat, and we had to stay quiet for like five months. You know, we had to stay quiet. You couldn't go outside. You couldn't let the the public notice that we're here. And we were told by our parents not to do that because if the police finds out, we get in huge trouble. And we was like we were living in fear all the times that we wherever we was, except Germany. Germany is we actually um like we got because our family suffered so much. We we're like we giving up. We're gonna stay in Germany. In Germany, we actually hand ourselves into the to the police, which was a much better much better police than the other countries that we crossed, like Slovakia, Romania, and all this stuff. Um, so in Germany, they 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 gave us a, a actual flat where we was a bit more comfortable. But that that that's the point where we gave up because we were suffering. My family was suffering so much; it was so hard for them that they. And in Germany, we got to Germany, they just they didn't want to travel to UK. They were like, let's stay in UK because I mean, let's stay in Germany because um, yeah. the the trouble, you know, the trouble going through all that stuff. It was it was hard. I was young. I was um, you know six and a half. I still felt fear because you know the older you know I, I couldn't make noise. If I made a noise. Um, I would have put the family in danger. So I was, I was very, like, I was very aware of what we were in. It wasn't like um, I was yeah. a happy guy. Yeah. Was, I the point where I actually got hit a couple of times by one of my uncles because I was making a little bit, a little bit too much noise. So, oh, but it's, it's, yeah. My next, my next question is like a two part. And so you've touched down in London. Um, how did you find yourself into a boxing gym? And what did your loved one say when, after all the danger you've just come through, you want to go and do something as dangerous as boxing? How did yeah. they respond to yeah. that? So how did you find your way in, and and uh, and how did they respond? I mean, boxing was, was yeah. I was kind of as a, as, a, as a youngster when I went to secondary school. I kind of lost myself in, mm. um, so I was hanging around a little bit with the wrong people, and I was getting into a lot of trouble in school. So, um, you know. Um, my family wasn't happy with me. They were like, listen, you know, they were working, they, all of them were working. They were like, listen, you, we, we send you to study somewhere. Understand, we need, you know, like, you need to put the work in. And um, I was like, because you like, was fighting so much to so go find a place where you can take that anger off. Maybe anguish or something. 
So, uh, yeah, I ended up uh, going to my local boxing, which was at Wolfhamstone. And it was about four of us. We went there as a friend. We just went there to just see how it is. Mm. And uh, there was a kid sitting next to me, and um, he goes to me, join the spa. We just literally watched the, the, the amateur sparring session. They were done. And all the, you know, like us, us are the beginners, and we just started now. And this kid next to me goes, do you want to spar? Do you want to spar? So I was like, all right, cool, I'll spar you. As we got in the ring, um, you know, we had both had gloves, no gum shield, both had <laughs> headbutting. And um, as both the bill, I run towards him, I start punching him. And the next <laughs> few seconds later, I look down, he's on the floor. And then the coach is like, listen, you can fight. And the rest is history. So. <laughs> nice, nice. What was the name of that gym? That wasn't with um, Noel in Wolfenstein, was it? Noel's yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I, bought, I boxed out of that club as well, man. Yeah. <laughs> that club, yeah, I, I can vouch for you, man. That club was one extreme place. If yeah, you couldn't fight in there, you weren't well, lasting, bro. Yeah, we'll find place, bro. <laughs> I like that, man. I fell in love with the sports. I mean, I was I used to box as an unlicensed boxer with no yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was they used to chuck me with anyone, and I said yes because I love fighting. <laughs> uh, so I had about a unlicensed fight and then turned to amateurs. Um, That's insane. Man. How old did you when you started, um, started the unlicensed? Because I, I I went to a few uh, a few um, a few of those shows, man. They're they're a, they're a daunting experience when you're cutting your teeth in boxing. Yeah. Man. Amateur boxing's a lot of nicer nicer vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you in? How did you feel doing that? I was, I think I had my first fight around, I was 15 and a half. So I was really, really <laughs> wow, you're still a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mental. thought a guy, it was, I, thought, I thought a man, I thought, I thought, I thought literally a man, and you know, they're like 10 kilo heavier than me. I thought, you know, they were oh, wow. fighting and you like fighting the match up. And I was like, yeah, but it wasn't much of a skill, just like a ball. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it wasn't like too much technique. I knew a bit of technique. I still got some of the videos from them. Yeah, uh, I had right. a little bit of technique. I had a decent record. I mean, I, most of the fights I fought away for, I still pulled out the wins. Uh, so yeah. then I thought, you know, I met this coach called David. Um, yeah. You know, he came to the Nose Gym. And Nose Gym just moved to, to Chingford, towards Chingford at that time. Mm. It was in, uh, like, it was in, yeah, between Chingford and uh, Walthamstow. Uh, it was a huge gym. Um, and this, this coach, Wolf David, Fo- came and goes to me, listen, she turned amateur. Was that Walthamstow yeah, Forest, ABC? Uh, no, it was in... No, no, no. It was still, it was still, um, it was still a nose gym, but we uh, just literally moved to um, Chinko. Oh, he moved on to a new place. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, he moved on to a new place. Not, not the latest place. Not where they are now. Yeah, um, yeah. It was just, just before this one. Um, so yeah, I mean, we moved there, and this coach told me, "Listen, you can turn amateur." And I was like, "Where are we gonna go?" And he took me to a boxing club, and this used to be at Ed- Edmonton, and I was the first amateur boxer at, Ed- at that gym. And we had a good, we had a good record at that time. I think it was nine and one or something like that. Then I went to the Peacocks and um, yeah, carried on boxing there. So it was, it was a great, it was a great learning. You know, the amateur was great. It was a great learning experience. Yeah. But definitely. I never, when I was, when I got to the elite level, I never took, I never, you know, I never took it serious. I was training twice a week, so it wasn't like I wasn't thinking I'm going to turn pro in. I was just doing it for the fun of it. Still. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I could have had uh, a lot better if I trained how I'm training now in the pros and I, I, if I knew that I can go that far, I probably trained a lot more better and I probably won, would have won a lot of amateur stuff. But still, I ended up having 28 fight and uh, coming out with short points to a top level fighters such as Lucian Reed and many other that won the ABA. But yeah. Yeah, you know, like the thing is, so sort of fans of the show know how to box uh, the amateur boxing circuit can work sometimes, you know what I mean? Like a, a record in the amateurs, yeah. you know, if you're if you're with the right club and you're you know, not saying they're not talented yeah. boys, but you'll get the nod, you know, in a, in a different way. Um, yeah, yeah. But it sounds like you served the like ultimate apprenticeship in boxing, man. Like you do you've you done it all. Been about the block, hasn't he? Yeah. Good. Oh jeez, fifteen and a half years old, my man's in having fights in uh, in smokers. That's, nice, life, that's, yeah. a, that's yeah. amazing. And we look now, Casey, you're with Frank Warren, right? Yeah, yeah, we just uh, they signed me up um, last year. We was meant to be on, like, we were scheduled for about three fight, and due to coronavirus, uh, <clears throat> due to this pandemic, the date keep changing. And then my last fight, which I mean, um, that my last schedule was in November against Ejaz Ahmed, and I ended up being test testing positive, um, you know, at the bubble. Uh-huh. Um, so it was, it was, yeah, it was it was a bit upsetting. I mean, I didn't have no symptom, but. We felt great, yeah. you know, there was no symptom at us and it was upsetting, you know, we put a lot of work into it yeah. and we end up. I'm now very careful, so hopefully I'm looking to do a quarantine from next week 
Um, but it was just me and Jim and home, and even at home, I'm staying away from family and all from everyone. Just being in a flat, uh, isolating, and just Jim, just that, just to make sure that we are 100% clear this and make the fight happen, you know, the fight goes the right way. Man, it's like a new, a new facet to boxing. As if boxing wasn't hard enough in the last couple of weeks, you got your weight cut, and now you've got your, your, your quarantine weight cut. It's like a yeah, <laughs> just getting tougher out here, Casey. Man. Yeah, it's <laughs> gonna be tough. tough. I want, I want to, yeah, I want to be on the safe side this time, you know. I want, I want this fight as bad as. As, yeah, I won this fight so bad. Like, yeah, um, you know, last year has been a very bad year because um, I had three, four fight dates, all got cancelled. Then end up my mom being passing away from uh, cancer. She fought cancer, and so um, you know, it's last year. So, and then November I was meant to fight. Then the fight, you know, I test positive, so it was it was a very bad year. Uh, but I'm just happy. I'm I'm starting this year with a very a positive mindset, and hopefully, you know, being yeah. very more careful. Um, mm-hmm. That makes it like, all the more impressive, like your positive mindset and coming on. But it seems to be working, though, man. The, the you know thinking about positivity, you got your card on the. So like, you come a long way from the the smokers with Noel. You've got what the Copper Box Arena on the undercard of Carl Frampton, one of the biggest fighters in the UK right now. Um, yeah, what, yeah. what a way to kickstart the year, man! Like, it's, if you you know, I know you're going to get that get that W and go on to have a big year. Um, if you could pick, like, if you could pick an opponent moving forward for the year. Who you got your eyes on, like you know, domestically? You said a couple names again. Could you say say them again for um, the audience and like who are they? Who do you want? You know, like I said, I mean, Super Flower is is really really buzzing this year. I mean, you got some great talents. Okay, starting from the former world champions, you got Khalid Yafai. He just recently lost title. So hopefully, if I pull out the performance that I need to pull out in this fight, that I've set myself the performance. If I can pull out that performance and get at the W the way I wanted to. Um, I'll call out a, a, you know, a couple of names that are really on the top <laughs> list. And uh, I won't say it now, but that's what I'm saying. I want everyone to tune in and hopefully um, I'll give a call out for them. But like I said, I have my eyes on top, top guys on that super flyweight. Yeah, it's always like it's always been a strong division in, in this country. We've always got a strong domestic, you know, in and around those weights, like the super flyers. And right now I'll say a couple of names, not saying you're calling them out, but... We've got Sonny Edwards. We, um, Sonny Edwards and yourself, I think, would be a fantastic fight to make. You're both with the right promoter um, to get that fight made. And I think that, um, you know, you're both both from South East, you know, and it's a, that's, a, that's a fight. If you get, this, you get this W, you look good. You're on the right platform here. Oh, definitely. Me, me and Sonny, um, you know, we've sparred and same as Charlie. And like I said, they're, they're great t- talent. And um, that's the fight. Definitely um, me and Sonny looking much because there's four world towers, so he's on his journey. Because he's not, I don't think he's really interested in fighting for fighting domestically unless he's defending his British title. And we're not interested in British title. right now. We're, we're looking to rank ourselves up through the WBO and IBF ranking, yes, same uh, as him. Yeah, and yeah. Obviously there's four world title, and if he pulls out a title, uh, he's definitely going to get a world title. If he gets a world title, we get our one, and then have the biggest domestic uh, super flyweight fight in history. And um, I think and that can be done, you know, that could have been done by Charlie Edward and Khalid Yafai, but. I think they they both you know that to moment when they were world champion they could have had, they could have made that match between them but I think um yeah they left it too late now they both lost the title um so yeah, you know true. me and yeah. Sonny is like uh, we've we've discussed as well we've talked as well you know we're looking yeah. for um, definitely we're looking to fight down the yeah. line like further down the line but there's yeah. uh the other names that are my in my mind are still a top you know former world champions they the the, the the name in order for me I need their name in to go up the ranking, so I'm more interested in them. Yeah, I love that. I love the ambition, man. That's good. Yeah, you and Sunny, man. That's definitely oh, a sounds- fight. There. Yeah, definitely a fight. If I if that fight got announced, uh, I could buy a ticket. I would buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely will get announced soon. Yeah, Casey, I want I want to ask you. I know I know you're very family orientated and you've got a big following, um, but obviously due to the uh, pandemic, a, lo- a lot of the fights will be behind closed doors. How much of an impact would that be for you? Uh, fighting in a sort of empty arena. You know, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I, I can fight in a garage, wherever I don't care, man. As long as a fight, as long as I'm in the and you proved that, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but then again, I mean, obviously having the fan, you get a different type of excitement. Um, but um, like right now, the the good thing about fighting on on live on BT on this platform is that. Um, People can still watch it from home, uh, all the way behind closed. People can still watch it, and um, I've, the good thing, and also I've got just recently the Afghan Af- Afghanistan, um, you know, media has 
recently published about me saying that this guy he, about my, my fight and so they, I've got a whole country uh, waiting to see me as well for this fight so I mean right now the meet, the, 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 the follow is just picking up and um, hopefully get this title one I think it's going to be um, making history from Afghanistan as well like first British Afghani to get this far and also I'm taking both the name country up because obviously this country gave me the opportunity but then again that's my motherland I have, no, to, of course. I have to, you know, I have to, I have, I have to carry both of them in my name. So, yeah, what an, opp- what an opportunity to be the first, first Afghani world champion. Um, like, what, what a thing to be able to say, man. It's a great story, there. Yeah, definitely Afghan. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely a great story. Um, Casey, I know, you, I know you mentioned um, fighting out of the Peacock's gym. Um, <laughs> one, one of their main, main fighters is, is Anthony Yard, who uh, lost yeah. his fight against Lyndon Arthur. Um, mm. What's your thoughts on that fight, and and how do you see a potential rematch going? You know, I had uh, if you look at my last interview on, I think is uh, Boxing Social. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they 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 just before the actual fight, they asked me the same question. Say, what would you had the fight? I said, I said Anthony Yard would win if you know by stoppage. He would win by stoppage, but if he gets the points, Lyndon Off because Lyndon Off is a great boxer, and mm-hmm. um, you know he's he's got that boxing pedigree. I mean, Anthony Yard. He's always been a banger, and he's got Antonio has got so much potential. But it's just that obviously he needs the right team. He's got the right team, and the right they've done a great things for him. But if he has some more people that has got more experience into that team, I think he could very very far. Don't get me wrong, Tunde has done a hell of a job for him. Uh, but I think if Tunde can get someone that is a world uh, experience trainer or something just to work with him, you know, there's always learn in boxing. The the thing about it is you always learn from someone. No matter how good you are, you still learn. Like Floyd says, says he learns from boys that is in the gym. And um, everyone comes with different mindsets, so you always pick up new stuff. And I think uh, if they if they get someone, um, they, you know, get someone in their team that has got the world-level ex- experience and, you know, put on that on board. And, you know, because um, when I looked at that file in the offer and Anthony Yard, Anthony Yard had all the, the, all the tools to beat him. The only thing was that he... He forgot how to cut the ring. There was no cutting ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't know how to cut the ring. A new world level fighter, uh, he should have cut the ring. And if he cut the ring, he would have knocked out Lyndon Offer easily. And that was the only thing that was missing. And um, he didn't let his hand go as much. Um, but if they rematch and they pick up on that stuff, I think Anthony Yard will stop him in the sixth round. Yeah, I think that's so smart. Do you, do you yeah. agree? I think that's smart. Okay, well, Casey, I think what you just said is, uh, is really smart, man. Like, um, about the second pair of eyes in boxing, people, you know... Well, boxing is a very extreme sport, but, you know, saying that Tunde, you know, he's, he's you've done a bad job or a good job in boxing, but like, you know, or a great job, whatever. Tunde's done a good job um, and a second pair of eyes yeah. can't hurt. If you look at Anthony Joshua right right now, he's taken on um, a, a Angel Mendes. He's into... got... Yeah, he's got so many eyes on him. I mean, he's got his... Exactly. His former... And now uh, Rob, Rob McCracken sort of is the, is the kind of, yeah, yeah. is the sort of director of the whole thing. You've got one man who's doing the pads. Um, and uh, you know, there's no, there's no shame in that. No, a football kit team doesn't just have the manager, does it? As, as the coaches, no, no. Has, has a lot of pair of eyes. If mm. you look at Tyson Fury, he learned so much through different coaches, and there's always every every coach is teaching him something. And he picked up, and and to be a great fighter, it's all about you picking up stuff from each coaches. Because there's 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 always a coach got something for you to you know for you to give. It's about you picking it up and 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 you know using it with the other experience that you've got. And um, and, and like I said, Anthony Yard. Could have even even be Kovalev if he had the right, you know, if he had uh, someone that had a world world class um, experience in in his corner as well, uh, he could have beat Kovalev. And um, it's unfortunate that you know he took a loss there and then he took a loss against and uh, in the North. I like Anthony. Anthony Yard is very close close friend to me, and same as Tinder. They both I've trained alongside them. They're great people. I'm always big support from them. They're a huge team. And like I said, I think that I personally think um, that's the only thing that's missing. They just need someone. All the experience level, just being around him and giving out some ideas and helping out through the camps. Yeah, are you uh, so Casey, you're a, you're a big fan of boxing outside of the ring, and um, if so, like what fights would you want to see coming up in 2021 outside of yourself and Sonny Edwards? Uh, uh 2020, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of boxing. Um, like there's some great fights, like I like to see Ryan Garcia versus Javante. I still think Javante, okay, will, will okay, knock him out. <laughs> You think you think you might do it? 
<laughs> Javante, I think right now at that that way, Javante is pound for pound the best man. I don't think anyone can hit as hard as him, man. I, I know, mm-hmm. I know Lopez got the the the, the older bills and all that. But if they meet Javante right now, I don't think anyone can beat Javante that way. At oh. the small weight, um, he's just he's just a different different machine, man. Uh, people don't understand. I'm telling you, like this guy can hit hard. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I like to see Ryan Garcia even with Haney. Um, that would be a good fight because they're both skillful. They're both long and they've both had, they've had history. So it'd be a great fight for boxing. Um, I don't mind Lopez sharing the ring with them. So I mean, these are, these fours are right now the crackers, man. They they got their all attention. And yeah. um, and if if uh, from from welterweight, uh, you know, everyone want to see um, um Crawford versus Spencer. You know, that's a yeah. huge fight. That's the Big fight that should yeah. be done. Like the biggest fight in welterweight. Um, yeah. In the whole world, like how, how um, do you see that fight but, going, though, Casey? How do you see that fight going? You no, know, it is a, it's gonna be a great fight, man, because they're both talent. But I think I got Crawford in edge. Uh, yeah. But like I said, they're both talent. It, it, it's it's a very close fight. They're both very good, so we don't know what tools they're gonna bring in. And it's the uh, then they it, who comes with a better plan. That's, that's all it is. And and they're both high in IQ. They're not like any guys that you say you can predict. You know, they, it's who comes out with the the, the right yeah. mindset because yeah. they're both. Two and specials, isn't it? They're both spe- And that's the thing very, with those, very, with those very, kind of top level fights. Um the though they're, they're, uh, they're you know, they're sort of you know, they could they could fight each other ten times and you'd have you'd have you'd have a different result in every different, in every, different in every result, fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're just so close and like you say, this it's about edges, it's about fine margins, it's about on the night. That mm-hmm. that lightweight uh quartet, same, same, like you know what I mean? It's, it'll go it's gonna they they will fight and on the given now. That's the thing about boxing. It's just it's always extreme. Like ah, oh, you beat someone once, you could beat them all the time. It's not necessarily true, but that's how it's perceived. Yeah, exactly. No, it is. It's it's what I, um you know. It's like it's a, everything plays out on on the fight fight days. You bet your luck. It's a bet your mindset. It's about how you come in. It's your hard work. So everything plays out. You know, and and the the guy that wins it is you know, it's what he, he packs the most in him. So. Yeah, man, and yeah. also uh, can't wait for that even AJ uh, AJ fight. That's that's gonna be a great fight. Uh, who you got in that one? It's a big fight. Who you got, man? Who you got? Who you got, who you got bro? <laughs> I got. I got. Put you on the spot there. I, You're in Queensbury, bro. You got me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I put you on the spot Queensbury. there, bro. <laughs> I love. I love both of them. I'm telling you, they they've been great for the British boxing. They've both been absolutely great for British. So I love both of them. I'm big, huge fan of both of them. But I just got Tyson Fury, man. I just think he's just a bit too last, too last. You know. Too, too, too elastic here, and he just yeah. he moves better. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, AJ. Just, I love him, man. He's, an, he's the one of the best. I um um role model for the heavyweight. Same yeah. as Tyson. They're both great. They both done great stuff for the uh, uh British boxing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. It's, it's just like I think Tyson Fury's got that edge, man. Yeah. I think Tyson Fury. Look, the reason I said that is because Tyson Fury beat Kadlisko when no one could beat Kadlisko. He was the first guy. Yeah. Because he's he... got that crazy mental mental strength, you know. And same as Wilder. Wilder is just an animal. He was seen as an animal. People, most people lost the fight just before getting into the ring with him. Although he fought bums and that, but it's still most of them. They're still fighters, I and mean, they still got they, they still got hands and legs, you know. But most most of them fighters just going into the ring with him, they lost the fight. And uh, someone like Tyson Fury, you know, putting that first performance and coming the second from knocking him out is is mad. You can tell this guy's mental strength, um, mental strength is different, man. Yeah, he's a he is a beast. He is a it'll be a it'll be unbelievable. How about you guys? Who 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 have you lot got? I got to go Tyson Fury. <laughs> same same, yeah. same yeah. reasoning, yeah. same reasoning. Like, do you know what I mean? I think it would be electric, and it will. A lot of that fight will come down to who can hold their nerve on that night. So, like, you know, mental strength will yeah, be a big yeah. thing because there'll be yeah, so yeah. many people watching. There'll be so much needle, so much pressure on that fight. Um, that it might not even come down to yeah. a performance. It will just be who can hold it together better and deliver on the night. You know? yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like what, what made Mayweather great is that he was he created this magnitude when he fought. He created that magnitude that he's a, he looked like a monster in, in front of yeah. his opponent. Whoever yeah. he fought, they lost a fight just looking at him. You're they, that, right. That mental, you know, they, he looked like a big, huge monster. And that's what it's all about. Some people don't understand. You see, when you go to boxing, when you talk about levels, Mm-hmm. And you see certain fighters coming out with this, this big aura around him, and um, you know, you they don't even have to punch you. You just get tired looking. For, just, <laughs> you just get tired from just looking at him. Yeah, and um, someone like Floyd, you know, he was so great at doing that. He fought in those big magnitude that no one has ever fought, no one has experienced. So when they faced him, 
he looked like a huge monster to them and you know um, that he, big all around him just it, it was an okay, it was an event wasn't it like you sort of any, anyone very few people came in to fight Mayova as an equal it was always you were Mayova's yeah. opponent and he did that to like yeah. Miguel, Miguel Cotto like uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez yeah. but when they fought Mayova they always just seemed like they were his opponent the huge stars and exactly. he, was a, he was amazing yeah. at that and when you get that into your yeah, into your, men, your, your mentality that you're the opponent that will seep into everything I guess yeah. like, do you know what exactly. I mean exactly yeah, yeah and, um, you know, the thing about Floyd was Floyd was great at mind games. Yeah, he mm. knew how to make sure that his opponent is an opponent. Yeah, not uh, not the champion. You know, he yeah. he he was very clever. You know, he took he used to bring up this because he, he always ma- mentioned that he's the A level for that he's the A side yeah, game. The A side always he's the saying that. Yeah, the A side and he always said he and by just saying that you telling your opponent, listen, you 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 fight in my fight. You're yeah, in my real. turf. You're my home. And when you go into that ring, it's about who makes that ring their home. And yeah. like I said, just before going into the ring with Floyd, Floyd made sure made sure that his opponent knows that that's his home. So it was a lot of pressure on the opponent than him. Yeah, he was a master. That's one thing about Floyd. Like Floyd gets, you know, brilliant reflexes, brilliant boxing, etc. But he doesn't yeah. doesn't get enough credit for his psychological warfare. I've never heard someone sort yeah. of He's analyze great, Floyd yeah. in that way. That kind of mind you of boxing like because he was so good in the ring you didn't have to think about that but you are right he was a, no, no, he was a tactician like, like, like oh too much i mean psychology's game plays a huge if you lot i don't know if you lot read a book of uh a uh, book of um a war of uh, art yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah. yeah art of war or something like that. Yeah, yeah, talk about the psychology game of and all that shit and it's yeah. it's, it's, it's really it's really it's really you know it makes big Nice, true thing, man. Seeing and thing. Right, Casey, we're going to finish up because we run out of time here, but uh, we're going to finish up. If you could go back where there's a, think of a 15 and a half year old boy running around Wolfhamstone now, he's sort of, he's doing his smokers and he wants to be pro like you one day. What advice would you give to my man and how can he make it to be like Casey and be fighting for the WBO titles at the Copper Box Arena? Uh, I'll tell him, listen, you can be a star, just put the work in now and, 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 you know, visualize yourself. I think vision, vision is everything. If you, if at that age, if I could vision, I could get here. Uh, I probably made it way, way, way ahead. You know, um, I retired for, for a few years boxing. So, yeah. if I could tell that to myself, and I wouldn't waste that years, I would have been this for a long time ago. Yeah. So just that self belief. And just I, that I just want to tell everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Self belief, yourself. faith, hard work. Yeah. Hard work, belief, having faith. Will get you to anywhere you need to be. Get you get is 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 the way to success. So definitely for anyone that's watching anyone, this. If there's anyone who know, who knows about believing, you can get someone and get in there. It's you, Casey, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Andy, do you want to finish us up? Fantastic stuff. Yeah, fantastic stuff, Casey. Thank you very much for joining us on yeah, the way. Yeah, it's, it's been great to talk. Great to talk, talk about your 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 really good long journey. Like, you know, it's really fascinating mm-hmm. and really inspiring. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, cheers for that, Casey. I got caught up yeah. in that. I was like, I was like, I was drifting off in there. I was just, just like loving the interview. All right, boy. Yeah. Cheers no, for that, boy. Great stuff. So, um, great stuff, Casey. So, all the best in your next fight, February the twenty seventh in London, taking on Alas Ahmed, the WBO and IBF European Super Flyweight titles. Thank Watching you guys. the Weigh In podcast. All the best. Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>